Welcome. In this video, we're going to be learning about the defense system of our body. Our body needs to defend itself from pathogens. These are microorganisms that can cause disease. The disease arises either from toxins being produced by the pathogen or direct cell damage by the pathogen to our cells. Now, bacteria can produce toxins and they can also directly damage our cells. But viruses can also damage our cells by going inside them and making them blow up. And it's the presence of toxins and or cell damage that eventually leads to symptoms. So here's a bacteria, and this is an antigen on its surface. It's nothing special. I mean, all our cells do have antigens as well. However, these antigens are not the same as the ones on our cells. They are foreign antigens. And the presence of foreign antigens in our body is what triggers our defense system. So in an exam, most of the time when they are referring to antigens, in this topic, they are referring to the foreign ones. And you can say that a foreign antigen triggers our defense system or immune system and also causes the production of antibodies. Now, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We still have to look at our defense system and see how it's structured. Now, our defense system is split into two parts, specific and non-specific. The specific, as the name suggests, only works for specific antigens. Whereas the non-specific does not discriminate based on antigen, it will kill all pathogens. So let's start with the non-specific. The first barrier to entry for a pathogen into our body is our physical barriers. And these are skin, mucus in the airways, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, and even our tears. Yes, believe it or not, even your tears. These all work for all types of pathogens. Let's say a pathogen was sneaky enough and it managed to pass the physical barriers and get into our body. This will now activate the second part of the non-specific response, also known as phagocytosis. Now, phagocytes are white blood cells such as macrophages and neutrophils. They will engulf and digest the pathogens. And that is phagocytosis. Again, these white blood cells do not specify the antigen on the pathogen. They'll just find them, eat them, and kill them. However, it doesn't stop there. Now that it knows your body's under attack, it will now activate the first part of the specific immune response, and that is T cells, also known as T lymphocytes. T cells will then destroy infected cells, activate more white blood cells to do more phagocytosis, and also activate the fourth stage of the immune response. And that is B cells, also known as B lymphocytes. These cells will produce antibodies, which will shoot down all the pathogens and hopefully clear your body from any infection. Now again, this is just an overview. In this video, we wanna focus on number two, phagocytosis. Okay, so a quick recap. A phagocyte is a white blood cell, such as a macrophage or a neutrophil they engulf and digest pathogens. And this process is called phagocytosis. And here's how it works. So here we have a phagocyte. This three-lobed object is actually its nucleus. And the reason it's like that is so that it can squeeze through different cells and get all around your body. Here we have a pathogen and it has its foreign antigens on its surface. Now the phagocyte doesn't have eyes. It can't see the pathogen it will still be able to follow it because the pathogen, wherever it goes, leaves a trail of chemicals known as chemoattractants. And just like a police dog sniffs around for the criminal, the phagocyte will use the concentration gradient to direct itself towards the pathogen. Now the phagocyte moves closer and closer towards the pathogen until eventually they touch. The phagocyte binds to the pathogen and then the receptors on the surface of the phagocyte recognize the foreign antigen. Next, the white blood cell will surround its cytoplasm around the pathogen and begin to engulf it. This process is also known as endocytosis. Eventually, it has fully consumed it and placed it into this ball known as a phagosome, or you can call it a vesicle or a phagocytic vacuole. Those three words all refer to the same thing, the sphere that the pathogen is now trapped within. Now the phagocyte also has these other balls inside it called lysosomes. These are vesicles that contain lysozymes, which are digestive enzymes. 
In the next stage, the lysosomes will move towards the pathogen, and eventually, the lysozymes and the phagocytic vacuole will fuse together. The lysosomes fuse with the phagosome, and the digestive enzymes are released and go and break down the pathogen. The main way they do this is by hydrolyzing the cell wall, and as a result, pathogens like bacteria are more likely to burst and die. The material from the pathogen is then absorbed by the white blood cell. Notice, however, that antigens are not digested. These antigens then move to the surface of the cell. Now, the antigens are on the surface of the cell, and what we have here is an APC, which stands for Antigen Presenting Cell. The APC will go and activate other cells of the immune system, such as T cells. The antigens on its surface are used to activate other cells of the immune system and let them know that it's time to fight because the body is under infection. So let's summarize phagocytosis. Step one, the phagocyte is attracted by chemicals released by the pathogen. Step two, receptors on the surface of the phagocyte recognize the foreign antigen. Step three, the phagocyte then engulfs the pathogen by endocytosis. Step four, the pathogen is now enclosed in a phagosome, or you can call it a phagocytic vacuole or vesicle. Step five, lysosomes containing lysozyme enzymes fuse with the phagosome. Step six, hydrolysis and absorption of the pathogen occurs. And that is phagocytosis. Now the last step, step seven, where antigens are placed on the surface of the phagocyte, turning it into an APC, is not technically part of phagocytosis. However, it is important to know this because this is what will be used when starting the next stage, which is T-cells. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.